What's going on guys, Basso Basics here, back to another video, and today I'm here to do another retrospective of the Metal Month. This time I'm going over a very kind of underrated band who has a pretty big discography if you take it into consideration. I'm talking about one of the pioneers of the floor death metal scene, the almighty Obituary. Now, for me, I feel like this is a band whose earlier work outshines more than its later work. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll be talking about that here more later on, but I feel like most people, if not everyone, basically considers everything that they did in the early days and kind of ignores the later output. But I might be wrong on that, which I most likely am. So, after listening to all this, this was a very fun discography. A lot of grooves, a lot of, a lot of cool riffs, the vocals are absolutely just out of left field if you could take it into consideration but with that being said let's go back into this uh backstory here this band formed in 1984 out of tampa bay florida part of the whole florida death metal scene they were originally called executioner but they later took out the e to avoid confusion with the thrash metal band from boston executioner now they later changed obituary in 88 with the first line consisting of john tardy on vocals his brother donald on drums jerry tidwell on guitar trevor perez on rhythm guitar and jerome grable on drums they were inspired by sabotage morbid angel death and nasty sabotage the whole floor death metal scene that was starting to grow at that time after recording three demos from 85 to 87 and after doing the Raging Death compilation, Grable would be replaced by Daniel Tucker, and Jerry would be replaced by Alan West. Soul Devil lead us into 1989 with their debut album, Slowly We Rot. This is a pretty fun debut album. Now, compared to the, er compared to the later work, it's not their best. If you do consider it their best, I mean, good for you. This is them dipping their toes, getting their foot in the door, as they will later on to do uh, greater acclaims. There's some really good tracks here like Eternal Bleeding, uh, Stink Up is I think that's how you pronounce it. I would like to call it Stinky Puss because I'm immature like that. Uh, Suffocation, Intoxicated, Immortal Visions is pretty cool. The title track's really great. Overall, yeah, the, as you will like go on throughout the entire discography. The, <clears throat> The song titles may seem generic if you're like a diehard nerd like I am. But if you take it and turn your brain off, just consider this as a very fun death metal band that loves doing fun death metal. Simple as that. And John Tardy's vocals, I have to talk about this. He kind of sounds like Chuck Schuldner if Chuck went way over the top with it. And he had more of a hardcore bite to it. That's what I kind of feel like John Hardy is. It's just a fun, goofy, dumb death metal album that they they don't shy away from the dumb and the fun. So, what's wrong about that? So, after Solo We Rot, Tucker and Wes would quit. Enter Frank Watkins, who would later on to be going on into Gorgoroth later on. He will be on bass. And legendary death metal guitarist James Murphy, who has done stuff with Death, Testament, and will later on going to join uh, Cancer and I think Disincarnate. I think that was kind of a solo project. I, th I think it was a solo project that later turned on to a band. So then we would go two years, or not two years later, actually one year later, 1990's Cause of Death. A lot of people consider it their favorite of the obituary catalog. I gotta go with everyone and say, yeah, this is my favorite as well, folks. I mean, <clears throat> this is basically a greatest hits of theirs because every track here is fun and it, it's so stupid, but it's so fun. Infected, Body Bag, Chopped in Half. Again, with the over the top goofiness, the title track. Um, oh, wait, no, there's no title track, I think. Uh, dying, Find the Arise, Memories Remain, Turn Inside Out. They even did a cover of Circle, the Tyr Circle of the Tyrants by Celtic Frost. That's a hell of a cover song, I will admit. That's, that might be better than the original if taken into consideration. 
But folks, this is an absolute classic. It's one of the best death metal albums of all time. One of the best debut or sophomore outings. One of the best death metal sophomore outings. You name it. Absolutely awesome. This is a great album. I love it. And you should too. So in support of this album, they toured with Secret Right and in, in Forced Entry in the United States. Demolition Hammer and Morgoth in Europe. And finally, they went back to the States in, uh, with Sepultura and Sadus. Prior to recording sessions in 1991 for the next album, James would leave and join Cancer, and Alan would make his glorious return. So then, a year later, 1992, we get The Incomplete. Now, this album feels a little bit water, feels like a watered down version of Cause of Death, but I still think it's a really good album. Um, I'm in Pain's a really cool opener. The title track is kind of almost doomy in some spots. Corrosive, um, Killing Time, and The End of Life. Sickness is my favorite off of that because it's got that really kind of doomy, kind of sludgy kind of groove to it that is just, ooh, it's just oozing with it. So yeah, overall, The Incomplete, not the best, but certainly not the worst in their catalog. And as you guys may notice, this might go a little bit shorter because there's not a whole hell of a lot to talk about. Because if you think about it, it's kind of, they're kind of like the ACDC of death metal. And that, that's just not a bad thing. It's just that some people are like, oh, well, they just released the same album over and over again. Technically, yes, kind of like Cannibal Corpse. But at the same time, it's fun. Why are you trying to take away the fun from it? So, after a year touring so selling more than a thousand copies, 1994 World Demise comes out. This, I think, is a bit better than the end, complete, the end complete, but not as great as Cause of Death. But with that being said, don't care. Well, I think the first single off of this is an absolute classic. It's a life staple to this day. Solid State, Paralyzing, Splattered, Boiling Point, Set in Stone, Final Thoughts. The title track's really great. The only problem, well, a couple problems. One, they kind of incorporate some kind of industrial intros and samples throughout the album, which is, it kind of sets the mood, but it kind of sets it off. The last track, I think it's called Kill For Me. Is so filler. I'm pretty sure my gym shorts would like to have questions later. It has. It was a decent song until the very end, where I don't even know what the hell it was. Like it's like this. I think guy from Africa going through his village talking about some random shit. It was such a weird, like weird way to end it. Like if it ended in set in stone, I think it would have been a great album. Um, album closer but I mean I guess they were trying to experiment a little bit so overall not a bad album I think it's a bit better than the incomplete but not as great as probably the later out like a couple albums and not as great as cause of death but still really good album so in uh, support of World Demise they tore one uh, Napalm Death and then the Unknown Machine Head in the States and in Europe, they uh, toured with I He Got and Pitch Shifter. And then, three years later, we go to 1997's Back from the Dead. I'm going to be honest, folks. This is my least favorite uh, Obituary album. It's not a bad album. Obituary, in my opinion, don't really have a bad album. This album, to me... Feels more like a groove metal album than a death metal album. Whereas, Sully Rod, Incomplete, Cause of Death, and uh, World Demise, they were more groovy, but they still had that death metal like grit to it. Here, it just felt like a full on groove metal album, and it doesn't help that they were with Roadrunner at this time. And Roadrunner in the late 90s was not a good time because they were signing all the new metal and the groove metal bands, and the extreme metal bands, like I think Suffocation was with them at one point. And, uh, yeah. Again, 
Death Metal in the early 90s, they were gods. Like, like Morbid Angel, Cannibal Corpse, Suffocation, you know, all, all of those bands, they were absolutely amazing. But then the late 90s, they went, like, they would either sell it with the groove metal stuff or they went for a bullshit new metal album. Obituary didn't really go that far, but in my opinion, this felt more like a groove metal album. But with that being said, there were still some good songs like Threatening Skies, Platonic Disease, Rewind, Feeding on the Weak. The song running kind of feel kind of feels a little bit uninspired, and John Tardy sounds like he doesn't want to be there at some points. And their instrumentation kind of sounds a little bit lackluster. But it's not a god awful album. I'll still enjoy this album, but in my opinion, the weakest in their catalog. So after this, they were getting a little bit burned out. They were getting tired of touring, which led to them ultimately disbanding. Now during this time, Donald would play in Andrew WK's touring band, and I think he would make an appearance on SNL with, uh, I think, one of the t-shirts that he was wearing. <laughs> and then Alan West went on to be in Six Feet Under. No, I'm not kidding. He actually joined Six Feet Under. I wonder if Chris Barnes will let him smoke one of his dreads. We can only speculate. And then, um, and then another side, side project called Lowbrow. Now, Trevor went to form Catastrophic in 08, but then the band eventually reformed in 03 with Catastrophic still co coinciding and existing along with the uh, reformation of Obituary. So then, in 2005, they will release their comeback album, Frozen in Time. Another noticeable thing is this. This is the last ever album that Scott Burns produced. I forgot to mention that Scott Burns did all the way from Slowly We Rot till this album. This was the last ever album that Scott Burns actually worked on. Which is kind of interesting because I thought he stopped at like in like 99 or 98. But no, he actually produced this album this I uh, this is his last ever um, album he produced because after this he uh, completely disbanded from uh, music in general because he didn't want to be pigeonholed as the death metal guy and I can understand that because the shit that he did in the nineties with other death metal bands in like thrash metal like uh, Sepultura he was one of the best producers at that point but I can we all understand from where he's coming from. This is a really good comeback album. I really, really, really enjoy this album. The opening riff of Redneck Stomp, it really gets you back and like, yes, this is the obituary we wanted. Uh, aforementioned Redneck Stomp, On the Floor, Blindsided, Mindset, Slow Death, Stand Alone. Really, really, really good songwritings. John Tardy sounds vicious on this album. The... Percussion and instrumentation is absolutely awesome. Really good stuff. Really good comeback album. So they made the Frozen Alive DVD in 2007 and sang it with Candlelight Records. And around this point, Ralph Santolo would be on lead guitar, who's done stuff at Deicide. He did a little stint with uh, Chuck and Death, and he would later be in. Uh, he would uh, actually get done with Ice Earth, I think. Uh, I think. I start and Deicide around this time, actually. So then, two years later, they recorded another album in 2007, Executioner's Return. Honestly, I would see some people say this is their least favorite, like they have it lower on the list. I actually really, really, really enjoy this album. Yeah, it's not as great as Frozen in Time and not as great as the earlier stuff. But in terms of the modern era, this is actually not a bad album. Only complaints I would probably say is that, yeah, there's a couple tracks that are going like a little bit too much. And songs can be a little uninspired here and there, but this is still a pretty fun album. Evil Ways, Bloodshot, Seal Your Fate, Second Chance in Your Head, Drop Dead. I feel like I'm just rhyming things at this point. This is a fun album, but I would prefer Frozen in Time a little bit. So after recording the Left to Die EP in 2008, they went back in 2009 for the follow-up, Darkest Day. This is a little, this is better, this is better. Out of 
probably the modern stuff. This is probably my second favorite, I would say, because I think there's another one that's a little bit better. This is a really good album. Um, I think, arguably, this may be a little bit better than Frozen in Time, but not as great as, like, Slowly Rot or Cause of Death. But with that being said, this is a pretty damn good stuff. Forces Realigned, See Me Now, the title track is very eerie and evil, List of Dead, Blood to Give, Payback, Violent Dreams kind of has like a hardcore vibe off of it. This is a really good album, really good, and, they, and the artwork's actually pretty damn cool as well, with the guy like fighting off some like weird tentacle, almost like Lovecraftian monster, which I think is really cool. So yeah, overall, Darkest Day, hell of an album. So then, then we begin working on new material for the next album. It will be the first album to not feature Frank on bass since Slowly We Rot. So this is a very big shift. And uh, Terry Butler would actually be on bass who did stuff with Chuck and Death as aforementioned. And Ken Andrews would replace Ralph Santolo on, on lead guitar because South, uh, I think Ralph would leave around 2011. Since 2012, the band was involved with UNation, which was like a new networking site that they were, you know, really in invested in. And Donald would begin a cat sanctuary organization named Metal Meowlition. Very clever, very clever. So in 2013, they restart. They start to rebuild their new studio and did a Kickstarter campaign that they did over like ten thousand dollars or something like that. So after signing with Relapse Records, they went back to the recording studio to 2014 Ain't in Blood. Oh, this is an interesting album. The only gripes I have is the production. The guitars sound a little bit muddy and you can hear the double kick on the, uh, on the drum bass. It kind of gets distracting every once in a while, but it doesn't really take any away from the album. With that being said, the songs here are absolutely amazing. Centuries of Lies is a really, really, really cool pace setter. Violent by Nature, Back on Top, Violence is a very vicious song. The title track, Out of Blood, uh, Minds of the World. Really, really cool song, right? Really unique. Again... I still prefer Darkest Day a little bit because I think the atmosphere on the album is a little bit better and the production's a little bit better. This is a good album, just the drums just sound off and the guitars sound buried a little bit. So there was some sad news around this time. On October 5th, uh, 18, 2015, Frank Watkins would sadly pass away from uh, cancer. Really, 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 really sad right there. He was a hell of a contributor. A really good bass player. He meant a lot to the band. But they pushed through. And in 2017, they recorded their self-titled album. This is their best in terms of the modern era. Like, again, Frozen at Time was a great album. Execution Re Executioner's Returns, a really solid album. Dar Darkest Day, very eerie. I like the atmosphere. Ink the Blood was good, though the production was a little bit murky. The production sounds massive on this album. Like, John Tardy, he just sounds monstrous. And there's a little more variety on this album. Like, the leads are absolutely phenomenal. Like, the solos are very fun. From the badassery of Brave, which feels like more of a hardcore, like, hardcore punk song. It, this album is just fantastic. Sentence Day, It Ends Now. Kneel Before Me, Turn to Stone, Thousand Ways to Die, Betrayed. This is a hell of an album. Like, I really, really, really enjoyed this album. I just got done listening to this about, like, a few hours ago. Awesome album. I really, really, really enjoy this. It's my... This is the best modern era in my... Like, modern album, in my opinion. Really, 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 really good stuff. So then... A year later, they were a part of Slayer's Farewell Tour, and there were some rumors speculating whether well, they're going to record a new album. Donald went on, uh, I think, um, I think like went on social media and said they're making a monster of a new album. 
And there's rumors speculating it may come out in 2022, perhaps. Because if so, all for it. So that's where we let, that's where we lead off here, folks. Very, very, very fun band. I really, really had a lot of fun doing this. Now, for the next installment of the Metal Month retrospective, we're gonna go to the cold and dark, dark atmosphere. Black metal. Oh boy, this one's going to be interesting, folks, because this band, highly influential in black metal, and arguably the beginners of Viking metal. Yes, folks, I'm talking about one of the best black metal bands of all time, the almighty Bathory. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Join her. I'll talk to you guys next video. Peace out.